Hey guys, I want to talk to you today about unworkability in relationships and a very big theme that I have been seeing coming up with clients around what to do in relationships with people where you know that they're not going to change. Okay, so there's a couple different pieces here that we have to talk about. One of them is compatibility versus compromise in relationships and that a lot of us learned to have relationships from a place of compromise and not actually compatibility. Now, there's several different scenarios where what I'm describing comes up. So parents is a really good example. People who live with their parents or um, just the relationship with their parents in general What do you do when they are not going to change? Now, everybody's changing, everybody's evolving. That's just the law of how consciousness functions. But when you're in this field of self-awareness and healing, you are catalyzing yourself to move much quickly, much, much quickly, much more quickly on this path. And obviously if you're not putting your attention and focus on that, then it's gonna be a slower process. So what do we do when we're outgrowing the people that we're closest to? Now, one of the things that I, hold on. Oh, I have to let the cat in, sorry. Okay. So one of the situations, let's say, where you're living with your parents and you can't get out of that situation, they're emotionally abusive, invalidating, all of those things, and you just kind of feel yourself like you're on a merry-go-round, just having the same experiences over and over and over again. Obviously, most people who are in that situation are tr- planning some type of an exit strategy, and that's gonna be your healing experience, right? Your healing experience is gonna be to be independent, to get out of that situation. It'll be even more possible for you to have a different relationship with your parents once that extra layer of pressure is out of the way and you have space to actually heal um, and you actually have space. But the thing is, is that you still have to share space with those people in the time being. So then it really just comes down to how do you want to respond in that situation? How do you want to, how do you want it to go? Because then we have to look at, okay, how much am I going to be communicating my needs and my authentic self? Because what a lot of people find is that, well, if they're not going to listen anyways, maybe I'll just create a situation that causes me the least amount of pain where I am finding places and, and people and safe spaces to actually talk about what's really going on with me. And I don't take that stuff to my parents or my family members because at this point I've decided that they're not actually going to meet me there. That's one option. And to possibly keep the door open for any change in behavior or where they might want to meet you where you are. Um, But it really is going to come down to the individual. And this is the same that goes in intimate relationships. (sighs) I see... And I did a post about this the other day, but it's like I see people trying to make themselves okay with something that they're not actually okay with or or trying to make themselves not need something that they actually need. And that's where the piece about compatibility versus um, compromise comes into play because, and I'll just briefly explain that, but so relationships that are based on compatibility are about looking at what is true for you what is true for me and authentically and realistically looking at the compatibility between those two things that's your needs your values how you want to live your life all those things relationships that are built on compromise which by the way there's nothing wrong with that it's just a totally different way of having relationships but relationships that are based on compromise are really about I take some pain and you take some pain, right? Because there's sacrifice that's involved. Now, um, compromise is not necessarily a bad thing so long as it's not something that is like a life or death value for you. So 
it might be okay for you to compromise on what you're having for dinner tonight with someone because it's not going to destroy your reality. Harder to compromise and maybe a less good idea to compromise on things that are really high priority for you because that's just going to lead to resentment, you know, later on down the road. <clears throat> and what it's doing is it's encouraging us to have relationships and then fit ourselves into those relationships instead of actually just be real about who and what we are and what we need. And so I would say that relationships based on compatibility also involve finding a third option, right? Which is really the most exalted form of compromise. It's relief for both people. But um, going back to, okay, how does this fit into the beginning of what I was talking about? <sighs> Futility. Yes, what do we do in situations where we feel that the relationship is futile? Now, when we're talking about, let's say, like a romantic relationship, what I think has to happen for a lot of people is that they have to reach a point where the pain of abandoning themselves to stay in that relationship is greater than and no longer is worth what they are getting by staying in that relationship. And people will ask, you know, how do you know when enough is enough? How do you know? You Only you know. You're the only person that can answer that. And so, you know, I'm definitely somebody who advocates for maintaining relationships when we can. Keeping ourselves open to the transformation of another person, especially when it comes to our parents. Um, but... It's going to be different for every person how you want to actually deal with the fact that there are people in your life and like okay for example you might have a child with someone and that person's going to be in your life basically forever right how do you deal with that situation when that person is not willing to change and i think that we have to be really honest with ourselves about whether that person's behavior will change or not and I think one of the greatest things that causes a lot of suffering for people um, is the expectation that it's going to be different. It's like some part of us, some young childlike part of us just holds out hope that this person is somehow going to show up differently. And I think if we can orient ourselves in a way that's a little bit more realistic, but also not uh, just assuming that that's how that person's always going to be, we're much more likely to go, okay, how do I want to be in relationship with this? For some people, the answer to that is going to be, I don't want to be in relationship with this, and that's still a form of a relationship. It's just, I don't want to talk to you, right? For some people, it's like a period of time of that, of kind of individuating away from that to be able to heal. For other people, it's going to be just having a surface-type relationship and knowing that that's the only way that you can have a relationship with that person. For other people, it's going to be continuing to put out an effort to connect and hope that by healing your own intergenerational trauma that that has an impact on your family line. But it's really, really crucial. I guess the point of this whole live is that it's really crucial to get in reality about where we might be spending unnecessary energy in futility instead of looking at how we're seeing this as an unworkable situation or maybe we're unwilling to see that this is an unworkable situation so that we can take the appropriate steps and if we are seeing this as an unworkable situation well okay that may be the reality and how do we want to be in relationship with that knowing that that's the reality of this person in our lives and maybe that you have to be like i said there's there's some types of relationships where it's like i mean with your family you can certainly get away from them but there's children there's other you know, things get messy. So there is no right or wrong. It's just about what's right for you. And I guess if I could close with anything, it's just to come back and say that you cannot deny your needs. You can, it just doesn't usually go very well. <laughs> so you're more, you're gonna be better off. We're all gonna be better off just going for our needs directly and being really honest about what that is. 
being honest about the places that we can and cannot get those things and the places that we can't get those things, figuring out how we want to be in relationship to that in a way that actually serves us instead of causes us more pain. Okay, that's all I have for you guys today. Just wanted to pop in and share that message. And yeah, much love. Bye guys. Oh, wait, how do I end this? There we go.